Hello, and welcome to today's special event. Security uh, Efficacy, is your program as good as you think it is? Brought to you by Spiceworks, Ziff Davis, and Cisco Umbrella. I am Karen Bannon, and I'll be the moderator for today. We have just a few quick notes before we begin. Slides will advance automatically throughout our event, and in addition, the console you're looking at is customizable. This means you can move and resize any of the windows you see open as well as explore the widgets at the bottom of your screen. We'd like the event to be as interactive as possible, so at this time we invite you to ask any questions you may have using that question box on the left side of your screen. We'll get to as many as we can towards the end of the event. And finally, an on-demand presentation will be available after the event and you will receive a lengthy email. So your information security program is the glue that holds together virtually all aspects of IT. It also defines your long-term outcomes in terms of business reliance. You might just be where you want to be or can be in terms of security, but is your program as good as it should be? That's why today our expert will discuss ideas on how you can measure the important aspects of your security program. You'll gain insight into assessing how things stack up and learn how to get where you need to be right now. We are very honored that Cisco Umbrella is sponsoring today's webinar. Cisco Umbrella is a cloud security platform that provides the first line of defense against threats on the Internet wherever users go. Because it's built into the foundation of the Internet, Umbrella delivers complete visibility into Internet activity across all locations, devices, and users. By analyzing and learning from this activity, Umbrella automatically uncovers attacker infrastructure stage for current and emerging threats and proactively blocks requests before a connection is established. With Umbrella, you can stop phishing and malware infections earlier, identify already infected devices faster, and prevent data exfiltration. And because it's delivered from the cloud, Umbrella provides an effective solution that is open, automated, and simple to use. And so with that, I'd like to introduce our expert, Kevin Beaver. Kevin is an information security consultant, expert witness, writer, and professional speaker with Atlanta-based Principal Logic. Having more than 31 years of experience in the industry and 25 years focusing on security, Kevin specializes in performing independent security assessments of web applications and network systems. He's written 12 books on information security, including Hacking for Dummies and The Practical Guide to HIPAA Privacy and Security Compliance. In addition, he's the creator of Security on Wheels Information Security audiobooks and blog providing security learning for IT professionals on the go. And with that, let's get started. Kevin, I'd like to turn it over to you. All right. Thanks so much, Karen. And hello, everyone. I hope you are staying healthy and uh, secure. The, um, the, the, the world is a different place now compared to the last time we did one of these webinars, and things are just absolutely nuts. So I, I just read an article in the Wall Street Journal yesterday titled, uh, Coronavirus Cybersecurity Fallout Might Not Be Felt for Weeks or Longer. And that pretty much sums up what's going on in the world at the moment, wouldn't you say? Uh, it, it, the article talked about remote workers using their own computers, email, and file sharing accounts for corporate work, which broadens the attack surface as if your attack service wasn't large and complicated enough. Uh, it, it talks about uh, the new reality that overstretched security teams are being pulled into IT operations projects, which is creating a lot of distraction. And of course, the criminal hackers are taking full advantage of this, not letting any good crisis go to waste. So given all that, rather than talking about all the challenges that enterprises are having right now with remote working, loss of control, this increased attack surface, and, and all that, I thought it would make sense to look at information security at a higher, broader level, specifically looking at, at how effective your overall security program is right now, um, just look at, just sort of diving in uh, to, to what's what, what's, uh, I, I guess, the most effective way to go about addressing security? And regardless of the, the specific topic or area of security that you're evaluating or managing moving forward, and regardless of what crisis comes up down the road, if you focus on the efficacy, the effectiveness, and the overall health of your program today and close up those gaps in the near future, you'll be ready to take on anything. Does that sound like a good use of our time? Okay, excellent. So let's let's talk about efficacy for just a brief moment. It's really a, a core part of peak performance. Merriam-Webster defines efficacy as the power to produce an effect. 
So really, at the heart of it, efficacy is all about how effective you believe you are at doing things and accomplishing things, and in this case, information security. So keeping a, uh, efficacy on your radar is extremely important if you're going to maximize the return you get out of all of your security efforts and invest investments, especially these days and, and really for the foreseeable future. So I, I know I'm stating the obvious here, but it needs to be stated. Security programs need to be proactive. That's why you're on this webinar, right? Uh, still, what we've witnessed over the past couple of weeks is a large number of organizations being caught off guard, literally people being caught with their pants down, not having a good plan for remote working, endpoint protection, awareness and training, and you know all, all the other protections against the, the, the threats that we're seeing, whether it's phishing, whether it's malware, whatever exploit is going around. And these are all taking place sort of against your users who are now largely out of your control. And I don't envy you if you have gotten caught up in this situation. I'm, I'm sure that if you are somehow responsible for IT or security in your organization, you have you know what I'm talking about, and, and you've been uh, up to your eyeballs in, in these difficulties, and certainly don't envy that. You can't look back. All you can do is focus on what's important moving forward, which means focusing on not being distracted and doing the things that you know need to be done or that you figure out need to be done, some of the things that we're going to talk about today. All right, so let's look at the core reasons for failures in information security programs. These are challenges that I've seen when performing vulnerability and penetration testing. These are challenges that I've seen when performing security operations reviews and, and broader information risk assessments. And these are challenges that I've seen doing consulting work as a virtual CISO. The, the late Neil Peart, drummer uh, from the band Rush, uh, once wrote, time after time we lose sight of the way our causes can't see their effects. I, I find that, that saying quite interesting, and, and it's, oddly enough, just yesterday while I was in my chiropractor's office, I saw a similar quote. This time it was written by D.D. D. Palmer, the founder of chiropractic back in, I think it was the late 1800s, it said. D.D. Um, D. Palmer said there's a vast difference between treating effects and adjusting the causes. However you look at it, it's how things work. Year after year, we see people making the same mistakes. Things like letting expediency drive their security initiatives. Things like having untrained users, and having untrained IT and security staff. I can't tell you, I mean, we all understand the challenges around users and you know, employees and contractors and whatnot, but when it comes to IT and security professionals, this is a big problem. It's arguably an even bigger problem. I can't tell you how many, how many of these people, how many technical staff I've talked to over the, over the past couple of decades and have asked them, hey, what... Uh, how, how much time do you get off per year to go to, uh, you know, security training, uh, security uh, seminars, conferences, taking courses, and and uh, and whatever? And almost always, it's zero. I know if you go to like the the RSA conference or some of these other big shows uh, where uh, security and IT professionals uh, tend to to mingle, you think, well, there's <laughs> somebody has budget, somebody has time and, and permission to go out and do these things when there's tens of thousands of people. Um, but still, by and large, I, I, I'm seeing a lack of training, a lack of skill development and all that, because there's always just too much going on. There's too much to manage. There's too much to oversee. And that's a problem. I also see under-implemented technologies. By that, I mean technical controls, uh, whatever it may be, at the endpoint, at the network perimeter, in the cloud, uh, even things related to users, um, I, I, I see them put in place. They're, they're, they're purchased, they're put in place, and they're sort of just l left there for, for uh, I, really, I guess, just just to check that box, just to show that effort has been made and uh, things are, are actually working. Um, but that's a problem. It's a problem. It creates a false sense of security, and it's not good use of security budget. Of course, there's over-reliance on compliance 
see this everywhere. Well, we're compliant. We have all these policies in place. We passed our uh, X, Y, and Z regulation audit, so therefore we're secure, but unfortunately it doesn't work that way. Um, I see that a lot with stock audits of data centers as well. Um, again, false sense of security, um, misguided uh, uh, direction over you know, pr priorities, really. Uh, lack of information, see, see that uh, quite often. Uh, organizations, even technical staff, don't have the visibility that they need to, uh, to manage their networks properly, which in turn translates to management not getting the information that they need in order to make decisions on uh, what should or should not be done in terms of security. Um, speaking of decisions, there usually are a lot of decisions that are being made, and it's in the context of users. Users are making security decisions on behalf of IT and, and security staff all the time. And that is a big problem. I think users are set up for failure by having unfettered access to systems and information. And I think they largely know that it's going to go unmonitored and unenforced. And today, with what's going on with coronavirus and COVID-19, it's as big of a challenge as ever. So you've got to keep that one on your radar. There's also communication breakdowns uh, between IT staff, or I, IT and security staff, and executive management, um, not only on the, the value of information security, but also what it truly means to the business and what must be done to correct those issues. I used to be sort of on the bandwagon of, oh, management just doesn't get it. It's management's fault that we have so many security challenges, but I'm starting to form some opinions that it's also uh, on the shoulders of, of IT and security professionals um, not properly communicating what should be communicated or just not knowing how to communicate, not doing it effectively, or just you know doing the techie talk thing and not providing management the information that they actually need that relates to the business and not just the bits and bytes and all the technical stuff floating around on the network. Um, I still do see management refusing. Um, uh, to see what's going on, you know, list, they listen to those responsible for security, and they assume that, that they're taking care of everything and, and ignoring the problems and proposed solutions uh, beyond that, really. Um, you know, in, in, a, in a lot of situations, they, they may want to um, hire somebody new to try to figure things out uh, once the, the current person in, the, in their security position resigns, and, and they just they keep wanting to get different information. It's like people... You know, when it relates to health care or, or finances or anything, they keep going to different doctors or different uh, financial advisors looking for the advice that, that they want to hear, not the, not the advice that the professionals are, are providing. Um, and, you know, I, I think arguably the, 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 the biggest challenge, maybe beyond expediency, is waiting for the perfect time to start. A lot of people think that, well, we've just got to – you know, we, once we once we get our network reconfigured, once we get all of our systems updated, once we go through that merger and acquisition, or we get the budget, or I go to a training class, then we can start addressing our security policies. Then we can start address, implementing the proper technologies. There's no better time to start than today. And the people that get that, that keep pushing things off are the people that end up in the headlines. They are the people dealing with the incidents and the breaches that we're all hearing about. And you don't want to be a part of that. You're not going to be a part of that because you're on this webinar. You're going to take some of, the, some of these ideas and thoughts and, and, and be more proactive in, in your uh, security management. So you know, every situation is different, and many of these are not going to apply to your situation. Just take note and keep these things on your radar because I'm seeing them everywhere. Better yet, make them your list of what not to do with security in the coming months, maybe even the whole year. So, um, yeah, keep these things on your radar. And as you're doing that, I wanted to, to just give you a, just a brief aside. One thing you have to remember is that there are two sides to security, generally speaking. Mo most people treat security as one. They're either, uh, they're either focusing on the technical side or the operational side, but they fail to see the interconnection between the two. And that's putting security programs and security efficacy uh, at risk. And, you know, I, I think what's driving a lot of this is that there's a continual gullible focus on policies 
without ever truly acknowledging the core vulnerabilities and threats and risks that are creating uh, the, the, the real issues. You know, and it, it's, again, people get caught off. They get off in the weeds with the technical stuff. Other people are so proud of their policies, and they're, they're ignoring the technical stuff, but it absolutely has to be both. And, you know, it's, it's really the, the risk that we're talking about here, it's usually one leads to another, and it's usually operational issues that lead to technical issues. It's, you know, it's people and it's processes, it's policies and it's technical controls and so on. There's so many things that you can do to improve an information security program or, more specifically, your information security program. So keep that in mind. And another thing to keep in mind, in just a moment, we're going to jump into an exercise and, and sort of step through some of this so that you can start thinking about where and how <clears throat> you can make some improvements. Something we've all experienced is the universal law that says you cannot change facts, but you can change problems. You cannot change facts, but you can change problems. So applying this to a, uh, you know, a well-run information security program, you, you can't change facts like the threats that you face or the breach that just occurred or e even looking at it just from a personal perspective. You can't change your age or how much it rains or how the economy is currently tanking. You can't change any of that. So you, you, just, you have to accept that. that. That's the reality. And if you try to change that, if you don't accept that, you're just going to keep spinning your wheels. But here's the good news. You can change the problems that you have, such as lack of visibility and control over your environment. You can, you can change or at least mitigate uh, expediency. You can, uh, you can fix some of the training issues that you have, patch management, technical issues, uh, poorly documented policies, uh, lack of expectations, um, how you prepare for incidents and breaches, all that stuff. You can change these types of problems. Never forget this. This is a really important part of managing information security. And I, I, um, I wrote a blog post just a few days ago that you should check out. You can read it on my website at principallogic.com. It's called Look for the Lessons and Be a Leader Among the COVID-19 Panic. And in that piece, I, I quoted um, Mel Robbins, and, and she said, if, if the problem you're facing can be solved with action, you don't have a problem. I love that. If the problem you're facing can be solved with action, you don't have a problem. So... In other words, most of your security quote-unquote problems can be solved with action. Therefore, you don't really have, have anything uh, that, that's holding you back. And, and you know, it, it goes for you know, health. It goes for finances. It goes for disaster preparedness, everything like that. But it takes both the willingness to do what you know needs to be done and the discipline to see it through. And now is as good a time as ever to evaluate and improve these aspects, these problems within your security program. So keep in mind as you're, as you're sort of trying to think of these problems versus these, the facts, the amount of progress that you're going to make in your security program is directly impacted by how many people and how many business functions are affected by the issue that you're solving. And it's also a factor of the pain that they're feeling because of this issue, so, you know, how often they feel the pain and, and, and so on. And, and, and really even uh, what it takes to solve the issue. So keep that in mind. You don't want to go fix problems or issues that, uh, that have very little payoff. You've got, to, uh, you've got to focus on the business relationship to them all. So here's an important question for you, $64,000 question, right? Where should your security program be right now? Where should it be in six months? What about a year from now? Um, that's a tough one to answer, but that's why you're on this webinar, right? That's why we're talking about these things. So <clears throat> lots of variables involved, and it's easy for us technical folks to look at security as sort of a binary function, but we also have to see reality for what it is. <laughs> There's so many things that impact an overall security program, things like the industry your business operates in, the information assets you're responsible for keeping protected and in check, uh, the systems that must be up and running all the time, um, 
regulatory requirements, uh, even um, legal requirements that business partners and clients may have pushed on you. Um, of course, IT and security budget, uh, your own expertise, security expertise, um, and then you know, just general expectations from all outside parties. It could be customers, business partners, could be the regulators or auditors. But as as we're seeing, you know, as as you've no doubt stepped through um, one of those lengthy security questionnaires, like everyone else has had to step through, I should say, suffer through. I think um, we're seeing the bar continually being raised, uh, or at least the uh, the liability uh, continually being pushed downstream. Perhaps that's a better way of putting it. Um, but you've got a lot of complexities involving your people, your processes, your systems. And there's a lot of stuff that ultimately defines how security looks in your organization. So there's no good answer to these questions. But if I could provide one simple answer to these questions, it would be that your security program should be exactly where it needs to be. Your security program should be exactly where it needs to be, all based on reliable information, having the right people involved, good decision making, and all that stuff. It needs to be where it needs to be. And the only way to know that is to step through exercises like what we're about to go through, to perform technical vulnerability and penetration testing, to look, uh, perform uh, you know, maybe security audits, data, those SOC data center audits, they're good. They have a purpose. They're part of the equation. And of course, there's, there's the, um, uh, you know, higher level information risk assessments and, you know, security operations review. So that's where you need to be. So let's, uh, let's talk about this thing here. This, this exercise is a great tool that you can go back to your office. Well, I guess you go back to your house and, and work on starting today or at least this week. And, and this exercise, it can help you turn around your security program or at least make sure that it's on the right track. It's called zero-based thinking, and it's something that management consultants use to turn around failing businesses. I've used it uh, working with my clients uh, to turn around their failing security programs or to get their security programs off the ground. And this happens to be something, it, it happens to be an exercise in what's called beginner's mind. Have you ever heard that term, beginner's mind? The concept of beginner's mind is something that I learned through studying meditation, it's basically getting rid of all your past biases, opinions, and really even knowledge when you look at things, in this case, information security. It's getting rid of all that junk, all that baggage, and looking at things from a fresh start, looking at it at, you know, from the perspective of a young child or maybe your, your grandparent or perhaps even a parent who may not understand what it is that you do in your work, kind of like me. Have you experienced that? Um, it's that, that That's one of the toughest things about working in this field is trying to explain what I do to uh, my parent, parents and relatives. So um, look at it from the perspective of beginner's mind, and you can stay open to um, not necessarily all the possibilities, but more possibilities. So here it is. There's two main questions. And I'm going to go through and give you some examples. And I'd love it if you could, um, you know, submit in, in the Q&A panel within the webinar, if you could submit some ideas uh, of what you're seeing, what you think could be improved to answer these two questions. First one is, if our security program was perfect, in every single way it would have X, Y, and Z. It would have all of these things. And then you just list them out. And please, I, I have the uh, Q&A panel up here, and I'll be looking for anyone uh, submitting any ideas. Uh, no pressure, uh, especially if you're um, listening to this after it's recorded and you're driving or something like that. That wouldn't be a good idea. It's a little risky. Uh, question number two, what we now know, knowing what we now know, what would we have more of and what would we have less of? These are great questions to, to answer, and they really get you thinking. And let me share with you some ideas. First one, if our security program was perfect in every single way, it would have, what about true visibility into our full environment? What if you, what if you could honestly say to management, to outside auditors, regulators, 
legal counsel, whoever has an interest in this, what if you could actually say that we have full visibility across our network? We have it on DNS. We have it on uh, across all of our cloud uh, connections. We have we have VPN. We have endpoints. We have databases, applications, all of this information, and it's so good, and it's so powerful, and it's so informative that we're making such good decisions. We're actually able to make decisions, and the decisions that we are making are good ones, at least we think they are. That's a, that, that's a really good one. That's a, um, that's a hard one to obtain, but again, if your program was perfect in every way, what would it have? I think that's a good one to, uh, to focus on. What about the right amount of information? So this is kind of related to the first one, but it's digging a little bit further. What if instead of having just, just megabytes and gigabytes and terabytes of logs and reports and files and stuff to, to look at, what if we had just the right information, again, to help us make informed decisions and help us see where the opportunities are in our security program. Again, this one is, it's not going to be easy, but it is attainable. I've seen it. And if you have the right tools and the right processes and the right in-house expertise, or perhaps you outsource all of this stuff, I really think that this is an important part of a security program. <clears throat> um, Tim uh, made, a, made a, a, a comment or a question. What about a checklist for a security plan like NIST? Yeah, absolutely. What if you had a, a checklist to, to follow, you know, whichever NIST regulation, is it 800-53, is it the cybersecurity framework, is it incident response? Yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> what if you had all that stuff and you had it in place, and it was well documented, and you knew exactly where to go to, uh, to, to reference it when you needed it? That's a good one, Tim. Thanks. Um, consistent testing. So one of my big um, soapbox talking points, I guess, is you can't secure the things that you don't acknowledge. I see so many organizations, and it's, this tends to happen in more mid-sized enterprises and, and even smaller businesses. The large ones typically not, although the testing is, is often not where it needs to be is that they don't have, they've never performed proper vulnerability and penetration testing. They've never tested their users. They've never truly looked at the, the patches that are missing on their network. And speaking of that, I, I feel like I need to do a, a dedicated webinar on just patching alone because that is facilitating so many challenges. Just wrapping up a, a security assessment, um, a network of almost a thousand computers with literally 30, 30 plus thousand missing patches across all their Windows systems, and they're dating back to the early 2000s. And nobody can figure out why ransomware is such a problem. Nobody can figure out why breaches are occurring and intellectual property is getting stolen. And I, I, I know I'm sounding negative, and I, I don't. That's not my intention. But I, I'm. I feel very. Um, <laughs> I'm very passionate about this, and I'm very passionate about addressing the security basics that we know work. And when people are skipping over those basics, um, it's, a, um, it's, it's a real problem. So you got to acknowledge those challenges, and you can only do that through consistent and periodic security testing. What about endpoint controls that work, and really even what about uh, – Cloud controls that work. What, what about DNS? What about looking? Uh, is your DNS properly locked down? Or, or is, is everything from from where the user sits all the way out to the the um, remote connection on the internet? Is that secured properly? And in many cases, it's not. Um, I see outdated uh, endpoint controls, um, traditional antivirus that that people um, often rely on. I see um, a lack of web filtering, secure web gateways, uh, DNS security. I see a lot of different things in this context. Um, what about users who are in the know and on our side? Probably should have made that the first one, right? Users, they're in the know and they're on our side and they're actually helping us work through all of this? Man, that's a good deal. Everybody needs that, right? <laughs> um, 
What about <clears throat> management willing to back us up both politically and financially? That would be nice. That would be really nice. Just make sure you are part of that solution and communicating properly to them. What about metrics? What if we had this, this whole slew of metrics where we could measure every single aspect of our security program from endpoint security out to the cloud to Internet usage, vulnerability management, incident response, metrics to manage all that stuff? That would be a pretty cool thing to have if you had a perfect security program. That would be something that I would expect you to see, uh, expect you to have. I would expect to see that, and it's something to work towards. There are some good resources online about security metrics. I've written some articles about it over the years. You could Google my name, Kevin Beaver, and security metrics, and and find some of that. So. Um, remember, Peter Drucker said you can't manage the things that you don't measure, so I strongly believe in that. And that wraps up the first question. So this right here, we, we've, we've spent, what, the past seven or eight minutes talking through it. You need to sit down yourself, ideally with some colleagues, and step through this exercise, this one question. This thing would probably take you, I don't know, 45 minutes or an hour, and you, you're probably going to come up with a list of, a, of a, a dozen things, maybe a couple of dozen things. Do that. It puts it in your subconscious mind, puts that in the in it makes you aware of, of what you want to aim towards, and then figure out which areas that you want to uh, dedicate your, your efforts to. It's really as simple as that when you're not putting out fires. Okay, second question. We'll get through this one uh, more quickly. Knowing what we now know, what would we have more of and what would we have less of? I'm going to lay out some of these examples. Yeah, we'd have more time, we'd have more budget, we'd have more staff, we'd have more training. Does this stuff sound familiar? Yep, I see, I see a lack of this in many organizations. So having more of it is a good thing, right? Um, what would we have less of? How about weekly security events where we're constantly putting out fires? What about security controls that are getting in the way what about all the distractions by the latest and greatest, you know, security products that, 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 that vow to fix all of your problems beyond uh, imagination, even though you still haven't addressed the basics? What about outsiders defining your security outcomes? Maybe it's auditors. Maybe it's outside consultants. Maybe it's vendors telling you what you need. I think these are great examples of you know, well, what do you need more of? What do you need less of? Sit down with your colleagues. Spend spend an hour on this. You could you could do this over lunch. Spend an hour going over these things, and then make them a priority. Put them on the radar not only of yourself and your colleagues, but also management. Go to management and say, Hey, look, we're doing an exercise exercise called zero based thinking. We're, we're basically trying to start from scratch and look at uh, with a fresh perspective of how our security program works, and we're going to use it to our advantage, and that's going to benefit the business. And that, by the way, is a great way to demonstrate to management that you're doing what it takes to, keep, to get them and keep them on board. It's an excellent thing to do. It shows them that you're looking out for the business. So... Look at this list and, and look at the, the, the list of the previous slide and ask, ask yourself, what exactly are we going to have to do or do differently to make all this stuff happen? You know, it, it, again, it's going to involve some, some complex things politically and culturally, um, but are you taking courses in time management, maybe goal setting and management? Are you subscribing to the proper security resources? Um, you, you know, you need to take some time to look at your ideas, your approaches, your strategies, and most importantly, your philosophies to see what's working and what's not, because I guarantee you there are opportunities. You know, we, we get so caught up in our work and our way of life that we fail to come up with good ideas. You know, ideas that we love and that we know will help us. If, if we take the time to focus on those things, those ideas, we can make this stuff happen. And now that everybody's working from home, or most people are working from home, maybe you have a new set of challenges, but set aside, set aside 10 or 15 minutes every other day and work on this, and I guarantee you you're going to see some positive outcomes. 
I saw a, um, a quote by a gentleman named Charlie Munger the other day. He said, any year that you don't destroy one of your best-loved ideas is probably a wasted year. So come up with these ideas and then just destroy it. Just nail it. You're going to make it so good that everyone's going to notice. You've got to stop going through the motions, though. You've got to do something that's been proven to work. You know, just as much as the, the food that we put in our mouths impacts literally everything about us, physically, mentally, and emotionally, you've got to figure out what you need to do, and I can assure you it's these exercises that we're talking about. Okay, Let's, um, let me share with you a few more thoughts, and we're going to close things out. I know I'm, I'm dragging on, but this stuff is so important. I want to underscore or highlight the, the reality. As you're stepping through these zero-based thinking exercises, really when addressing every part of your security program, think about the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle. It says that you know, 80% of your results come from 20% of your actions, and, and it's not just for good results. It can also apply to bad results, so you have to keep that in mind. For example, 80% of your security events may come from 20% of your vulnerabilities, and that's almost always the case. That's a bad result. But looking at it from the positive perspective, addressing the vital few, 20% of your security gaps, you'll get 80, an 80% 80 return on the value of your efforts. That's a good result. So look at the 80-20s in your organization as they relate to IT and security. You'll likely find that most of your problems and your successes are coming from just a few things, quite possibly just a handful, three or four things that are creating most of your business risks. And this approach, it can help you become more focused on what's working, spend less time on security, and, and, and also help you realize what's not working so that you can take the necessary action. I believe it was Jim Rohn who originally said, is this as good as you're going to get, or are you going to get any better? You've got to be addressing the things that count if you're going to get better the trivial, many, and the vital few. You need to know the difference, and you need to be focusing on those vital few. So just, just know that no matter you know, the links that you're going to, no matter how much money you're spending, no matter how distracted you are, especially now, no matter how much time and effort you're putting into your security program, there is always, always, always more that you could be doing. If you want to run an effective and efficient security program, you have to make this a part of your mindset. So I've already given you some ideas. Here are some more. It's education and training and patching and testing and visibility and communication, information, metrics. The important thing is that you're asking yourself, what else can we be doing? And in the end, You've got to ask yourself, is what we're doing going to be defensible in the event of an audit or worse, a, a, an incident or a breach? And a, a lot of that stuff ends up on the desks of lawyers. So this is one of the most important things to consider as it relates to how you're addressing security and how you're prioritizing your projects. Is your own lawyer or lawyers or your outside legal counsel, are they willing to defend the things that you're doing today in your security program? And how is an opposing lawyer going to look at what you're doing and pick it apart to make you and your business look bad? I've done a lot of expert witness work over the years, and I see how these things play out. So you have to get all the right people involved at the executive level of the business, including legal counsel. And uh, is it Gil or – yeah, Gil – uh, just made a comment, knowing when and what to say no to. That's a great one. That's a great one. I think that, that really ties in Gil or Jill. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's Gil. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it. Um, that that uh, is just as important as uh, one of the things about uh, you know waiting until the perfect time to get started, knowing what and when to say no to. That's great. That, thank, thank you for, for bringing that up and pointing that out. Okay, additional reading. I've covered a lot, but there's so much to learn about this part of security. Um, and before I shall my, share my final thoughts and we move on to the Q&A, there's, there's this one last thing. I've written a ton about this subject, about management and leadership and getting the most out of your security program. So head over to my website, principallogic.com, and check out my resources page 
under that, you, you'll see the link to my articles, podcasts, and webcasts, and then the subject of management. Or you can just go straight to the URL that you see right here, principallogic.com slash management. On this page, I have links to several hundred articles that I've written about security oversight, including a ton that I've written for the toolbox.com website that I think you might like. So check out that page. Even if there's nothing more that you do with this today, check it out. I really think uh, you'll benefit from some of the ideas that I share in these pieces um, that I've written that will complement what I've, what I've already talked about. Okay, the sky's the limit. Or is it? Well, I was originally going to tell you, yeah, the sky's the limit when it comes to your security program, but I saw a meme recently on, on social media that made me realize that's not true. The sky is only the beginning. The sky is only the beginning. Know that there's always more that you can be doing. Hold yourself accountable. Get other people involved. Do the things that you know need to be done. And when you focus on these aspects of your security program, you're going to come out on the other side in the not-too-distant future, a better IT or security professional who works for a more resilient organization and who has a stronger career ahead. Folks, I hope this is helpful. We're just scratching the surface here, but I've given you some ideas that you can implement to help make some positive changes to your security program in this world of negativity that we're currently in, uh, both in the short term and over the long haul, and, and I hope you find them to be beneficial. So, Karen, back over to you for the Q&A. Thanks so much. And I have to say this is one of my favorite webinars that you've done. I love the, the format. I love the the questions and really making it interactive. And we've got plenty of questions coming in while you were chatting, so um, we can jump right in. But just a reminder, if you're out there and you are um, have any questions uh, for Kevin, please go ahead and enter it right there in the Q&A box, which is on the left side of your screen. So let's jump right in with this first question from Steve. Steve says, how would you handle the situation of executive management thinking that we need to focus on X, Y, and Z with security when my colleagues and I are focused on A, B, and C in somewhat of a different direction? Ooh, that's, um, that's a challenge uh, that I don't envy you for. I've, I've seen that quite a bit, actually. I've seen where management thinks that they need to, you need to implement you know, so-and-so technology or, or you need to start doing more SOC audits or IT control audits and less vulnerability and penetration testing or less uh, blue team exercises. I mean, I see that a lot. Um, that's a really tricky situation to be in. Um, I would say that education, uh, you know, obviously on the part of yourself, but edu you educating management on where you truly think the risks are, I think that can be helpful. It can open up a dialogue between both parties, hopefully, uh, so you can so you can each you know have a mature conversation about what you think is important to the business. I would say at the end of the day that they you know security ultimately falls on them, and of course the the laps of lawyers, right? Um, I, I would say you need to you need to find a happy medium. Maybe you kind of go down the path of of what it is that they're saying that they, they believe that they need. And if it makes sense, then may, maybe you do it. If they can explain it well enough and, and you can see the tangible business benefits well, you know, enough, clearly enough, then do it. If you don't and you feel very strongly about it, then tell them why. Have that dialogue. The important thing is you don't want them to set you up for failure when if you know – that X, Y, and Z or A, B, and C need to be addressed and, and just the opposite is getting all the attention, then that can set you up for a, a sort of an, a, a, negative, um, a negative career event, uh, something that could be impactful to your CV. Um, so, yeah, be, be careful. Move on to a different job if you have to, if you feel like you're being set up for failure, but um, definitely have that dialogue. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Uh, let's see. Next question comes from Jillian. Jillian says, who should ultimately oversee the information security function and the recommendations that you've made? Ooh. Um, I was going to say, uh, you know, the, the first thing that comes to mind is the CISO, Chief Information Security Officer, Chief Security Officer, Security Manager, whatever. Um, ultimately, I still think security, it's such a high 
top-level business function these days that executive management is ultimately responsible for security. And I think a lot of executives are seeing that these days. You know, board board members are asking about it. Um, customers and business partners are asking. So, yeah, ultimately it comes down to what management and, and legal counsel are willing to defend. But, you know, of course the day-to-day -day work, the you know, the ongoing – more tactical stuff, and even most of the strategic stuff is going to be handled by a CISO, or it's going to be handled by a security manager, or it could just be an IT director. Uh, if, if you don't have anyone dedicated to security, it could be you that you're the you're, you're the IT manager, director, or network admin that's 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 handling most of it. But I would not take full responsibility for all of it. You've got to get other people involved because otherwise you're you're being set up for failure. We are actually a little bit past the quarter of the hour, so why don't we ask one more question and let everyone get back to okay. the day. So uh, I have a question here from Chris. Chris wants to know, if we spent the next six months focused on one aspect of our security program, what should it be? It should be what you need. Um, for some people, it's understanding the risks. For others, it's implementing the proper technologies. Um, so others might might have uh, some communication breakdowns. They don't have a security committee. They need to get more people on board. Some people might say, well, I, if we could just fix our user training and awareness program, then that's all that we need in order to to, to be uh, successful with security. Um, it, it's really hard to say because every every business is different. Every level of risk tolerance, tolerance is different. I would say, by and large, you need to. Do these exercises. Do that zero-based thinking exercise. Um, it's, a, it's an exercise in critical thinking, and that, that critical thinking is often what's lacking in, in many security programs. And if, if you can do that, you get the right people on board, you can get on the right track, and you can make the necessary improvements uh, where they're needed. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. That was an excellent presentation, lots of great information. Um, sure. You're welcome. And I'd also like to thank everyone out there for spending time with us today at, at our special web event, Security Efficacy. Is your program as good as you think it is? I'm Karen Bannon, and on behalf of Kevin Beaver, Cisco Umbrella, and everyone at the Spiceworks Ziff Davis Family of Publications, Thank you for your time and have a great day.